genuinely influenced our decisions on budget options that we proposed to Council last December. However, I will not deny that we've had to make some difficult decisions. £48 million pounds of cuts this year, £27.5 million next year. I've said many times that I did not come into politics to make cuts. And if I was given the choice, of course, I would not wish to cut any services. However, given that 85% of our income comes from central business, we are in the ambiguous position of having to make these decisions in order to set a legal budget. But let me make one thing clear, Mr Mayor. In spite of what the opposition may say, the responsibility for these cuts that we've had to make on this council lies squarely at the door of this Tory Liberal Democrat. <laughs> around at least a number of items in the Labour budget. The 7.6 million of growth is measured to support older people, young people with learning disabilities and adopters and special guardians. <coughs> 1 million to enhance early intervention. 2 million pounds investment in upgrading Europa Pool, Skinny Gap and West Curve. I'm pleased that we've been able to use 400,000 from the Waste Development Fund to reinstate monthly cleansing of entry. And I'm also pleased that we will be continuing our funding commitment to constituency committees over the next year. I'm pleased that we'll ensure that the Williamson Art Gallery can operate while the Action Group, which has been uh, looking at new ways of building this value facility, finalises its business plan. And I'm also pleased that we've been able to provide reassurance that no funding will be withdrawn from school cutting controls where agreement cannot be reached with schools. With regard to our staff, I'm pleased that we were able to maintain a generous voluntary settlement scheme. I'm also pleased that under this Labour administration, this council became a living wage council last year. <laughs> and I now want to go further, and I want Wirral to become a living wage borough. <laughs> Mr Mayor, I think it's, sh it's shame that yet again, the Conservative group in their amendment attacking our staff by deleting the funding for full-time trade union officials. I have said many times that trade unions play a vital role in achieving good industrial relations, and working with trade unions in partnership is a sign of a progressive organisation. Yes. Mr Mayor, with regard to next year's council tax, I'm pleased to announce that we will freeze the council tax in 2014-15. Providing the government doesn't change the rules, we also aim to freeze the council tax in 2015-16. We've been able to do this because the government have been forced to change its policy in response to lobbying from this council and others that the freeze grant should be built into the base budget. But let me make it clear, Mr. Mayor, the freeze grant of 1.3 million, whilst welcome, pales into insignificance against the 20 million, which this government has cut from rural council's budget. And if the government is really serious about helping council by rural, they should reimburse the lion's share of this 120 million pounds. Mr. Yeah. Mayor, yeah. the council freeze will, I believe, help all residents of the borough. We will not impose an extra burden on council taxpayers, hopefully for the next two years. We will continue to provide a discount to the vast majority of pensioners and we are putting 300,000 into the budget to ensure the poorest in our communities don't have to pay more on the government's disgraceful cut to council tax revenues. <coughs> Mr Mayor, these measures are important, but in contrast to the Tory amendment, which proposes a series of large and short-term one-off spending commitments, this administration is also proposing a 1.5 million house-building programme funded by a mixture of India and expense and borrowing to kickstart housing in those areas of the borough which have lost out after the housing market renewal programme was so callously cut by a stroke of Eric Pickle's pen. An absolute disgrace. <laughs> Mr Mayor, the Leader of the Opposition is wrong to claim that Magenta living will fill this gap. 
Official projections indicate that we need to build around about 600 new houses each year for the next five years. The Genesis program will only be sufficient to meet a small portion of this need, and much of the new, their new build will merely need to replace units that they have demolished. Our program will generate about 100 new homes with the potential to substantially more. It will benefit future generations of residents long after this budget has been passed. It will create a significant number of new jobs and apprenticeships for our young people. Most importantly, because we know there is a strong link between good housing and good health, it will contribute to reducing the gap in life expectancy, a key problem which has blighted work for far too long. Mr. Mayor, in conclusion, given the background I outlined earlier, this has been perhaps the most difficult budget I've been involved in setting. I will remind Council that we still have a huge financial challenge ahead of us. We need to achieve additional savings of 44 million over the next two years. And the remodeling work, which we discussed at the Member's Seminar last week for Laura Pavilion, is essential if we are to deliver these savings and continue to provide good quality service. Mr Mayor, I think it's essential that we continue to lobby the government to rethink the grossly unfair way in which it distributes funding to councils. I have to say, I find the Tory group's proposal to withdraw from membership of SIGOMA, an organisation which has spoken loudly in favour of local government, to be deeply, deeply cynical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Mayor, although we've had to make some difficult decisions, I am proud that we've put the council's finances on a sound footing. <coughs> we are helping all households with the council tax freeze. 2014-15 and hopefully the year beyond. We are putting extra money into the budget to meet our demographic growth. We are giving additional help to pensioners, the long-term unemployed, and attracting new jobs and investments. We have listened to and acted on the views of our residents. And crucially, our house building programme will leave a lasting legacy for future generations. Mr Mayor, this is a budget to be proud of. It's a budget of a progressive council with a clear vision for the future and a commitment to social justice, and I commend it to the Council.
Croatian government's economic policies are working. Oh. And, the UK economy, and the UK economy is now growing faster than any other major European economy. Businesses have created 1.6 million new jobs. That unemployment has come down sharply. I'm sure we will also welcome the fact that this has allowed the government to help hardworking people by, amongst other things, cutting income tax for the typical taxpayer by £590, giving a saving of £360 pounds on petrol to fill the car on the week, and of course, freezing council tax. Mr. Mayor, what a difference uh, to the economic mess the government inherited when they came to power. Labour had maxed out the national credit card, doubled our national debt, and taken us to brink of bankruptcy. They left Britain with the biggest country deficit in the developed world and in our own peacetime history, borrowing one pound in every four and a half pence, resulting in payments of 120 million pounds every day just to cover interest. So, Mr. Mayor, even the local Labour Party must surely now admit. Bearing down public spending was and remains an absolute priority for any sensible government. Even if the leader of the council overrates the pudding somewhat by claiming that by 2016 we will have seen our overall budget part since austerity measures were introduced. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, that's not overrating as a suggestion. It is, in fact, utter tosh. Mr. Mayor, let me be clear. Whilst I regret the same grant back to the government last year, I do welcome the fact that the administration have swallowed their pride and at last decided to freeze council tax, even if they've been brought to this point, kicking and screaming. I am, however, Mr. Mayor, disgusted that the only people that will see an increase in the direct contributions they have to make for rural services are pensioners. Given that the Labour administration have retained their cut in the pension of discount and removing it completely from some without any recognition of their means, Mr. Mayor, this is completely unfair. And I'm delighted that if our amendment is passed tonight, we will right this wrong. We also know that by their own hands, the Labour administration has increased the cost of living for an average family by £295.51 since April 2013. Therefore, we demonstrate that our cost of living burden can be reduced by reverting to pre-April 2012 car parking charges, reinstating a year-round three-after-three parking initiative, halving the charge for residents for garden waste collection, and freezing for one year of current levels for all council tax fees and charges. We've also been able to find resources to ensure that the money meant for the education of rural school children is not diverted to pay for the council's responsibility to provide school cost control. Now let me just be clear, because we didn't check on this particular point, as I did on the mall course, and that was made very clear that what, whatever the warm words of the leader of the council, no move has been made to put that money back into the budget, and that, that cut remains in place. Mr. Mayor, the law base also allows us to switch street lights back on, increase the level of dog dwelling enforcement, invest a million pounds with an immediate programme to repair potholes and improve world's roads and pavement, and maintain our commitment to early intervention and children's centres. In the sure knowledge that failure to support the other families in the early years will cost rural county taxpayers in the long term. So, Mr. Mayor, how are we going to find the resources to reduce the cost of living burden and reverse some of Labour's more baffling cuts? Well, we've looked to find solutions where any hard-working rural family who can scrutinise the council's budget would expect. Cutting back on the cost of ourselves, leaving the council bureaucracy, cutting out duplication, and being more ambitious to transform the entire council. How on earth can the current administration justify an alternative support to council's budget, spending 130000 on paying more trade union officials, a council press marketing and design department of 20 posts, spending £1.9 on items that are duplicated elsewhere in the borough, when they're missing children's centres, school crossing controls, switching off streetlights, and choosing to only make pensioners on 